A few days ago, I did a video where I ranked the top 10 quarterbacks in the NFL, and so today I decided to do the same thing, but with running backs. Running backs have always been a huge part of the game, but in recent times, they've been used in different ways than just handoffs, like sometimes using them as receivers. In recent history, we've seen some running backs carrying teams and helping them be contenders for the playoffs and, in some cases, Super Bowls. Without further ado, here are my top 10 running backs in the NFL. At number 10, I have Jacksonville Jaguars running back Leonard Fournette. I wasn't sure if Fournette should be on this list, but I decided to have him on because of his 2019 season. Fournette is a good player. I'm just not sure if he's shown what, that he should have been drafted at number 4 overall. In his three years in the NFL, he's had two 1,000-yard rushing seasons, but the Jags just declined his fifth-year option and are looking at possibly trading him in, in upcoming weeks. In his short career, Fournette has been troubled, getting multiple suspensions and even an ejection. He's also had injuries, and he's never played a full 16-game season. When he's on the field, he can be one of the best running backs in the NFL. He just can't seem to stay on it, though. Coming in at number 9, I have now Las Vegas running back Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs was really good as a rookie and probably should have won Offensive Rookie of the Year, but the only reason I have him at 9 is he's only played one season. Sure, he was great in that season, and if he had played more than one year, he would probably be higher on this list. I just need to see a little bit more from him. No matter what, though, Jacobs is one of the best running backs in the NFL. Jacobs is a bright spot on the Raiders, and he should be for years to come. At number 8, I have Cincinnati Bengals running back Joe Mixon. Originally, I was going to have Joe Mixon lower on this list, but then I really thought about it. He has put up similar numbers to Fournette and Jacobs, but he has played with a terrible offensive line. The Bengals have one of the worst offensive lines in the NFL, and in the past two seasons, Mixon has gone over 1,000 yards twice. With a better offensive line, Mixon could be one of the top running backs in the NFL, and it will be a big help for Joe Burrow in his rookie season. At number 7, I have Ezekiel Elliott. Elliott hasn't been able to duplicate the success he had in his rookie season, but by no means is he a bad NFL running back. He's gone over 1,000 yards three times, and in fact, he's gone over 1,300 yards three out of four seasons. He's also proved himself as a receiver, having just over 1,600 career receiving yards. In his career, he's averaged 4.6 yards per carry, which is 28th in NFL history, and 96.5 yards per game, which is 4th best in NFL history and best of all active players. Elliott has scored 48 touchdowns in his career, and, he's a real, and he is a player that the Cowboys can trust. Coming in at number 6, I have Nick Chubb. Since he was drafted, Nick Chubb immediately played great. As a rookie, he had a 92-yard rushing touchdown and barely missed out on 1,000 yards, uh, yards with 996. He was great in 2019, as he had 1,494 rush yards, which was second most in the NFL. He also had 278 receiving yards and 8 touchdowns. He made his first ever Pro Bowl, and even though he's only played in the NFL for two seasons, he's already established, established himself as one of the best running backs in the NFL. Next up, at number 5, I have Minnesota Vikings running back Dalvin Cook. I could have had Cook lower on this list because of his injuries, but I have him at 5 because of how talented he is when he's on the field. He had 354 rushing yards as a rookie before he tore his ACL, and in 11 games in 2018, he had 615 yards. In 2019, he broke out, having 1,135 rush yards and 13 touchdowns in 14 games. He also had over 500 receiving yards, and earlier in the season, he was on track with some of the best running backs in the NFL. The injuries limited him, limited him though, but if he can stay healthy, he can be one of the best running backs in the league. At number 4, I have Alvin Kamara. Just like Cook, Kamara was on track with some of the top running backs before he got injured. He was only able to start 9 games, but he ended the season with a total of 797 rush yards. He's never gone over 1,000 rush yards in a season, which doesn't sound great, but when you hear that he's never gone under 700 rush yards and he's never gone under 500 receiving yards, it sounds a lot better. He's one of the best dual threat running backs in the NFL, and if he can stay healthy, he will keep on improving. Before we get into the top three, here's some honorable mentions that are really good players, but just miss the list. I have Colts running back Marlon Mack, both Broncos running backs Philip Lindsay and Melvin Gordon, 
Ravens running back Mark Ingram, and a player who is closest to this list, Aaron Jones. Now, let's get into the top three. At number three, I have New York Giants running back Saquon Barkley. Just like the past few players on this list, Barkley has dealt with injuries, but when he's on the field, he's one of the best running backs in the NFL. He was drafted second overall, and he lived up to his expectations. He was a huge part of the Giants' offense, and he had over 1,300 rush yards and 700 receiving yards as a rookie. In 2019, even though he had injuries, he still had over 1,000 rush yards and nearly 500 receiving yards. On a poor Giants team, Barkley is a huge bright spot, and even though he's only played for two seasons, he has already became one of the best running backs in the NFL. In my opinion, the second best running back in the NFL is Derrick Henry. Henry didn't have the best first two seasons in the NFL, but he really turned it around after that. He made it just past 1,000 rushing yards in 2018 and even tied the record for the longest touchdown run in NFL history at 99 yards. In 2019, he got even better, and he had 1,540 rush yards, which was best in the NFL. In the playoffs, he showed us one of the most dominant performances by a player in a single playoff in NFL history. In three playoff games, he totaled 446 rushing yards and two touchdowns en route to the Titans beating the defending champion Patriots and the best team in the NFL in back-to-back games. He stayed with the Titans this offseason and will probably stay as a huge part of the Titans' off- offense. And at number one, I have Carolina Panthers running back Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey didn't have the best rookie season, having just over 1,000 yards from scrimmage, but in his second season, he was able to get over 1,000 rush yards and over 8 and 867 receiving yards. The next season, McCaffrey improved again, having 1,387 rush yards and 1,005 receiving yards, despite a lack of talent around him. To really show how poor the other pieces on the team were compared to him, McCaffrey accounted for 43% of the Panthers' offense this season. He became the third player of all time to get 1,000 rush yards and 1,000 receiving yards in a single season and made the Pro Bowl. He was also named a first-team All-Pro. He finished third in Offensive Player of the Year voting, and in this year's offseason, he signed a $64 million contract extension, which would keep him with the Panthers through 2025 and make him the highest-paid running back in NFL history. McCaffrey has been nearly unstoppable in his short time with the Panthers and will probably continue to be one of the best, if not the best, running back in the NFL. That's going to be about it for this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, and if you're new here, feel free to subscribe for more daily football content. Also, I have another channel where I play games like Madden called Oak Tree Gaming. You can check it out in the description. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time.